Cyberpunk 2077. This is the game that hit me with the truth in my face that my GPU is back at 1080p territory again. Until Cyberpunk, I was enjoying my 1440p screen with ultra settings in almost any game. In Reddit, there's this user, Doug Clapton, has given an extensive guide about optimized settings. You can find his nicely detailed page in the description. Right now, you're seeing me using those settings at 1440p and I'm still far away from a steady 60fps. I'm using a Radeon 57XT with slight overclock, who is apparently last generation now. If I was using a new gen NVIDIA card, I could have used the LSS 2.0 and got away with it. With AMD, I have two options. Lowering the resolution scale bar with in-game build fidelity effect sharpening, or lowering the actual resolution and enable fidelity effect sharpening in my GPU's Radeon settings. Neither of these options are convenient for this game. I'm sure most of AMD or old generation NVIDIA users have tried these solutions and not satisfied with it. The reason for this is the game's temporal reconstruction choices. AMD's fidelity effect sharpening has been designed for a proper temporal super sampling or simply TAA scenario. Cyberpunk 2077 is using a low quality temporal filtering and every effect in the game has different levels of temporal qualities. Screen space reflections are by far the worst among them. The game uses SSR on nearly every flat surface in the game and the quality setting only changes the resolution instead of limiting the surface number. The lower the setting, the lower the resolution. For a properly working temporal filtering, that shouldn't be too much of a problem as it would reconstruct the reflections by using the data from previous frames. However, CD Projekt Red has used a very low quality filter or no filter at all and this leaves us with a tittered mess. Now, the reflections are set to medium and glowing on the road is not smooth, as you can see. Instead, it looks like there is glitter powder on the road. When we lower the resolution and apply radian sharpening onto it, two things happen. First, the pixels get bigger due to lower resolution density. And second, sharpening only makes this glittering worse because it increases the contrast among these pixels. So, how can we increase our upscaling experience in AMD world? First, we need more resolutions. See, under 1440p, I'm only limited to 1080p, which is a lot lower. 1080p is 75% of 1440p for each axis. This means the pixel count is nearly halved. MD cars have an advantage here. They use higher quality GPU scalars. Using actual resolutions are better than using in-game resolution scaling sliders when using AMD cards. There are multiple ways to add custom resolutions. You can use Radeon settings, add custom resolutions menu, or use a third-party application like custom resolution unit. But here, I'll give you a better third option, using registry editing. First, we must learn the address in the registry. Go to Radeon settings menu, click on settings. Under system tab, click more details for hardware. Copy the address for the 2D driver file path. This address is the registry address we must go. Open regedit. Head to the address. On the right side, right click and select new and then binary value. Name it DAL non standard modes BCD1. Be careful with the capital letters. Now, double click it to open. You can see the different resolution settings for different screens. Pick your screen on the list and enter the corresponding values. The last four digits in the end of each line is your screen's refresh rate. I have a 144Hz screen. This is why it says 0144 in the end of every line. And here is the real advantage of this method. Normally, after a driver update, these custom resolutions will not survive and you'll have to re-add them. Now, select it by clicking it only once. From the top left, select File, Export. Give it a name, like custom resolutions or anything you like, and save it to somewhere you can remember. After a driver update, all you have to do is to double click it and you'll get your custom resolutions back. Once you're done, close regedit and restart. This will add the new resolutions to your screen. Now, we have many more resolutions to select in the game. In my case, if I'm okay for a close to 60 FPS experience, I can choose 2304 by 1296, which is equal to 90% resolution scaling. Or, I can insist on always keeping it above 60 and go for 2048 by 1152, which is equal to 80% scaling. This is still, still nearly 15% more pixels than 1080p and gives the boost I need for my gameplay experience. 4K or 5K screen owners can even have more resolutions. 
Of course, you can always go for even lower resolutions, but I wouldn't recommend it. Nowadays, games detect your resolution and limit the drawing quality deliberately. So, instead of blatantly reducing, it's better to go by small steps. Now, let's get to the sharpening part. You must have noticed that upscaling from a lower resolution makes the errors much more visible due to the bigger pixels. We need to filter those dithering areas before applying a sharpening filter. For this, we must use Reshade. I'll not give into detail for how to install it, as there are many perfect guides everywhere including their own web page. Simply go to reshade.me and it'll guide you from there. One important part though. I recommend selecting all the optional downloads while installing. You may want to explore new things later. Once you install it, get to the game and open Reshade menu. First thing we need is Gaussian Blur. Here we only need to change blur strength. How much? Depends on the resolution we pick. Here I pick 80% resolution. Subtract 80% from 100% and we get 20%. That is equal to 0.2. This is the minimum number we must pick. For a safety margin, we can add 0.050 or even 0.100 to it. So, let's select 0.300. That's it for Gaussian Blur. You can already see the dithering is becoming less visible. Now, the second part. We need a sharpening filter which is based on luminescence. And this sharpening filter is based on contrast and can increase the contrast differences between dithered areas. This makes the dithered areas pop up again. We don't want that. Good old Luma Sharpen looks for brightness differences for sharpening. This is more convenient in our case. For start, we set our offset the percentage of our resolution. In my case, it was 8%, so 0.8. Remember the strength from Gaussian Blur? This becomes our base sharpening strength, but 10 times higher. In my case, 0.300 becomes 3. Normally, this slider cannot get any higher than 3.0, but you can manually enter it. Click on it once, hit tab until coming on top of it again, and enter your value with keyboard. We also should raise the limit slightly. For my screen, I generally use between 0.090 and 0.150. Anything higher may cause all sharpening and even jagged edges. One final touch. The method should be wider. As you can see here in the description, the wider option is less sensitive to noise. Dithering is noise. So by picking wider, we are simply telling our sharpener to ignore the dithered areas and focus on the object shapes instead. The strength value of Luma Sharpen is only a base point. Everyone have different displays and different tastes, so you may go up and down by 20%. I mainly stay away from my screen and go for a slightly higher sharpening value. If somehow you feel like your sharpening amount is right, but there are artifacts, try slightly lowering the limiting value. That's it. It may not be a rival to the LSS 2.0, but it certainly is better than AMD's Fidelity FX upscaling. This way, we have much more control over our games because we have many more resolution options and we can effectively sharpen them without creating artifacts. Plus, this method can be used in any game that we can install a reshade. By the way, I have a bonus suggestion. Since lowering the resolution gave me additional performance room for additional effects, I went on and added a few more. My card may not have ray tracing enabled, but this doesn't mean I'm not allowed to tinker with shadows and lightning of the game. Here are two more shaders you can see I'm using. The first one is ambient light. You can think this one as bloom on steroids. <laughs> it takes the light sources in the screen and splashes their colors onto other areas. And the dark areas that are far away from the light sources are darkened even more. Simply, the overall scene gets its connection through lights. If there's a huge red sun on the scene, everyone is affected by its color and brightness. It's not as accurate as ray trace lights, but it is enough to increase immersion and realism feeling of the game. Secondly, we have the famous Lightroom shader, which has more talents than Photoshop. Three values are enough to make a huge difference though. For a more serious and realistic scene, increase contrast first. I recommend starting with 0.450. Now the blacks may be too black, so increase the gamma for about 10 to 20% of the contrast. Finally, decrease the saturation 10 to 20% and you're ready. You can assign head case for some of the effects or can set a general toggle key for, from the settings. And this is the end of the video.
Please share your experience in the comments and what do you think about the game, Reshade, and this lack of better upscaling methods or anything you may think of. Thank you for watching.